We are in Székesfehérvár, which is one of the most historic towns in uh, Hungary. It happens to be my hometown as well. And um, on that wall, you can see a reconstruction of uh, the former basilica that was uh, one of the largest church buildings uh, in its time when it was built in around uh, 1020. It was built by our first king and later there have been a lot of additions to the building so they, they, they kept uh, extending it and uh, a monastery was built on it as well. But behind us are the remains of it. Unfortunately uh, when the Turkish occupation happened in 1543 um, the Turkish did not really care about Christian church buildings and uh, this building was no exception so um, what they did to, to it they used this as gunpowder storage and it so happened that in 1601 when the the Christian troops started to recapture the city from the Turkish um, they actually managed to get through the walls, but then uh, the gunpowder storage got a spark and it exploded. So the building was mostly lost. But, interestingly, over there, where the apse of the, the, the last um, state of the building was, which was um, a massive building, it was, it was more than a hundred meters long, and uh, around the sides of it, there used to be um, chapels still in use up until 1800 when uh, they started to use the, the actual stones um, to rebuild the city after the Turkish occupation so um, and one of the buildings that has the most of those building stones of the, the former basilica is that yellow building which is the current bishop's palace and uh, yeah thanks very much for that and um, why it's, it's, it's a weird situation that we're in right, right now with this uh, basilica is shown by all those red tombstones. Those indicate the, the tombs that were used for kings and queens. So it was a burial place, a very important burial place for hundreds of years um, in Hungarian history, as well as a coronation place. So this basilica was the most important place of uh, crowning kings for hundreds of years up until 1543 uh, and uh, 38 kings were crowned here and uh, it was so important that for a while this, uh, there, there were three criteria uh, in order for someone to be accepted as a legitimate king of Hungary the first criteria was that he had to be crowned by the Archbishop of Esztergom by, uh, with the, by yes, uh, Archbishop of Esztergom with the crown of uh, the, the Holy Crown which was believed for a long time to have been the crown of our first king, St. Stephen and be crowned here in the Basilica of Székesfehérvá which back then was called Alba Regia, which means the royal seat, of uh, the white... Let's try it again. So it was Alba Regia, which translates into royal white. And the current name, Székesfehérvár, translates as the royal seat of the white castle. <laughs> so, we are here in Székesfehérvár, and this is a very important part of Hungarian history. And um, the other thing that you mentioned to me that I wanted is that they've taken all these bones out. Oh yeah. They've interned all the bones and they've moved them to yeah. a grave over to the side, and they're all in one. They're in crates. Yeah. So what happened was um, obviously during the Turkish occupation, which lasted almost 150 years. Um, the, the tombs of the kings were vandalized um, on many occasions but still they were in place when the, the excavation started in 1848 only 48 years after the whole area was buried because it was buried in order to, to build up the massive garden of the bishop's palace so um, this is how 
how highly they thought of our history back then. And um, so what happened in 1848, they found the first king, uh, the, the, the first tomb of a, of a king. Um, and uh, the only way for them to identify that king was based on his height because uh, that was uh, the skeletons and remains of a very tall person. Uh, by that I mean close to two meters, which was back in his time, in the 12th century, it was he was considered a giant. And indeed he was. And that, that is the only clue that they could use um, in order to identify him. But the rest of them have not been properly identified and they were stored in crates for a long, long time in an ossuary where the bones were stored. Uh, the problem with that, however, was that this had used to be a very swampy area and this is still very, very wet. So the groundwater is very high and because of the ossuary not having been properly insulated, unfortunately, the bones of our kings were soaked in water for six decades. Now it's properly insulated. The new uh, ossuary was rebuilt and reopened in 2000. And uh, now every year, once in a year, um, they are open for the public uh, to see, but the bones themselves cannot be seen. So you can, what, what, what you can see is only the crates, uh, nothing else. But uh, it's still an interesting thing. And I keep saying about that, that uh, we would still need to do something about identifying our own kings and uh, trying to figure out. I'm pretty sure that um, it could involve uh, some kind of genealogical work, uh, research, uh, as well as genetic research, as well as a lot of archaeological um, archaeological findings, um, that, that it, uh, archaeological research that could, have, uh, that could be conducted on the bones, on the teeth, you could find out what they ate, you could find out what they had, uh, what, what their lifestyle was, was based on that, if they had any diseases, a lot of things could be found out. So there's a lot of work to do. Unfortunately, there is no will um, for that to happen. And as a consequence of this, there is no funding. So it's sitting it's, here waiting. It's in here waiting for someone to make a decision to fund the research program that could easily lead to, I don't know, tens, tens of, um, of master's theses and, and I'm pretty sure there, there would be a lot of uh, PhD theses, um, uh, theses coming out of that as well. So that would be a very good um, research project, a massive one. All we need is a political will and funding for it. Just saying. Just saying. Okay, here we see a very important monument of our king. Uh, when you look at the fireplace, the fireplace says Matthias Rex. That is Matthias, our king uh, of the 15th century. Under his rule, Hungary was one of the major um, kingdoms, the, the major forces all over Europe. And uh, he was uh, trying to become the the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, he did not manage. He got as far as becoming the Bohemian king, which was a very important step towards that role. But um, under his rule, Hungary was the most stable um, in the Middle Ages, and uh, he introduced the Renaissance, and he introduced knowledge. He, he brought in lots of um, so-called scientists of the kind, thinkers, of, of that, uh, that era uh, from, from other uh, countries and uh, yeah that was that was a, um, a bit of the, the golden age of Hungary and uh, that bird up there which is a raven holding a ring in his beak that is the symbol of his family the Corvin family they are called the Corvins and uh, there are important uh, series of uh, documents called the Corvins and uh, <laughs> those are um, from, from his library that he compiled a lot of documents and uh, he had uh, um, 
historians writing up those uh, codexes. So, and the speaker, and the speaker. The speaker addresses the king and addresses the crowd as well, and um, it symbolizes also uh, one of the seven liberal arts, uh, rhetorics. And uh, above there, um, on the on the facade of the building, there are a couple of other examples like geometrics, arithmetics, and. Uh, that's oh, the codex writing, I don't know what, which liberal art that that belongs to. I don't think it does to anyone. Yeah. So this is from the 1400s. Well, uh, it was, no, the, the king is from the, the 1400s. King, king is from the 1400s and uh, the actual monument is from the, ni is from the ni in 1990. Which, 1990? Uh, 1990, which was the 500th anniversary of the death of the king. This building is a city hall of Sekeshvahirvar. And uh, above the, the, the main gate, you see the coat of arms of the, the, the city. Um, as many similar cities, it has an open gate um, in the coat of arms, which uh, symbolizes the openness of uh, the society. Uh, which, which was very important during uh, the Middle Ages and, and even um, in, in the 17th, 18th and uh, 19th centuries because this city was a very, culturally and uh, um, ethnically, it was, ethnically, it was a very diverse city. And for, most, for the longest time, the most frequently heard word in this city was German. And uh, and this is why the first documents saying that uh, talking about this building uh, mention it as Stadtrathaus, and it was back in the 1690s, so more than 300 years ago, which is quite amazing. And uh, you can see the flags, uh, the Hungarian flag in the middle. Uh, on the left, you see the European Union's flag, and on the right, you can see uh, the city's flag. Unfortunately, they're not really flying nicely but there are two important statues on the front and they have been there for more than 200 years on the left let me see if i can get to where i can see it better there she is justice justice exactly so you can see that uh, she holds a scale and she uh, she holds um, a sword in her other hand um, usually She's blindfolded, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's it's not um, a very important criterion. But the 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 attributes are quite visible. So, because this this used to be a Stadtrathaus uh, and now it's a city hall, so the seat of the government of the city. Um, obviously, it's um, it's a reminder that you have to be. Uh, you, you have to give justice a chance, and you, you have to um, make decisions so that uh, justice is, uh, is given. And on the right-hand side, you'll see Prudence, the statue of Prudence. Oh, wow. Yeah, with a little snake-like figure. And uh, yeah, those were the two most important guiding forces and guidelines for uh, the leaders of the city. And the bird up above? The bird above that is uh, is a symbol of the, 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 the Austrian um, occupation because for a long time we were part of the, the Habsburg Empire that later became the, the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. Okay, who's, what is that? Andras? That is a statue of Muiko, who is believed to have been the jester in uh, the court of uh, one of our most important kings called uh, King Matthias back in the 15th century. And he's sitting up there because he, he well, was known to be a person who would do high wire acts? Or? <laughs> no, no. Um, the concept behind that is unknown to me. Uh, why up there? But. Uh, I can tell you that it's a very beloved statue among uh, the citizens of Sekeshvayevat. But, well, I, sh I should probably not tell you about how it got up there, because 
that involves in, involved a lot of political fights. So it, yeah, it was not very nice, but uh, people love it. And in this time of uh, fake news and and um, you know making changes in our government, we have to look back on the comedians and the jesters who were able to tell truth to the kings and the politicians yeah. at some time. Yeah, and they were they were the they, they were, were the only, only ones who they were the only ones who could um, who could really do that. And the way to go about it was was ridicule, and not in a so it was not allowed to laugh at the at the king. But the jesters had a very important role. So, like, they had to, um, they had to come up with puzzles, and they were, they had to be so well connected with the king that uh, they could understand their uh, each other's little signals, and the others would probably not. So, however, we don't know too much of their roles because of. Uh, of the scarce documents. Right. Mm. This bell that you can see here used to belong to a church building that was um, dedicated to San John of Nepomuk and it's a bit further down the, the, the street here. You can see a little tower uh, just above that building uh, but it has two front towers as well and one of the front towers had the, uh, this uh, bell and uh, due to um, a bomb it fell off and it fell on the streets and it was lying on the streets for a long time and in 1995 um, a sculptor uh, named uh, Mario Lugoshi made this, uh, this memorial and uh, this memorial um, is for those people who lost their lives in the Second World War here in, in uh, Sikashvili. And there's the flags again, the and Hungarian the flag, now the city flag. Nicely. So on the left hand side you see the flag of Hungary, in the middle you see the flag of the city and uh, with the coat of arms in the middle and on the right hand side you see the EU flag. And remember that the coat of arms shows the city's gates open. Yep. And you can see another example of the coat of arms on the side of that building, on the corner of it. This is one of the most beautiful buildings in, the, in town. It's called the Hemer Font Carafa Complex. Um, three buildings in one. And uh, the, the gentleman who, uh, whom the building is named after um, used to be um, the city mayor. Oh. Hemer. Oh, and that's where Hemer Cafe and yep. restaurant. Yep. See it, guys? It's right there. And it was renovated a couple of years ago. It, it was finished in 2011. And uh, mostly thanks to the Norwegian Fund. And then the building that is right here, just in case you're curious, is a church that's being restored. Yep. It was named after a king's son. Yeah, the first who was killed by son. a royal boar, supposedly. A boar, yeah, supposedly, yeah, allegedly. In his twenties, <laughs> seems like Andras said there was an awful lot of wild boars killing uh, people, notably at that time. So it's up for interpretation whether he was really killed by a war, royal boar. Okay, okay. This is another important figure in Hungarian history called uh, George Varkoc, and. Uh, he was the defender of uh, the city against the Turkish when they came in 1543 um, in a gloomy autumn day. He was killed in front of the gates of the city when um, he rushed out with a um, bunch of his sol soldiers um, to attack, to, uh, to do a surprise attack on the, the Turkish troops. And uh, they managed to surprise them, but then the troops started to close in and they wanted to retreat, but the citizens closed the, the, the gates in front of them. So they basically died in front of their own gates. Um, this was where um, the northern gate used to be. By the balloon shop. <laughs> yeah. So the northern gate that was called the Buddha gate because that led to the road that led to Buddha, the current day capital. 
Budapest. Budapest, yeah.